Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For those of you who are online or by way of CD, we'd like to welcome you to Kingdom Truth Church. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And we're teaching from a series entitled, It's All About Jesus. Amen. All about Jesus. Amen. Turn with me to the book of John. To the book of John is in the Gospels. Amen. When you get there, just say amen. When you get there, the book of John. And we're going to start with the with the very first uh, chapter, and then we're going to move over into the 17th chapter, uh, if you don't mind. Amen? You get there, say amen. Oh, that's right. All I need is a couple. <laughs> amen. I'm going to begin reading. I'm reading from the NIV. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. And in him was life, and that life was the light of men. Verse 5 says, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness understood or comprehended it not. My Lord, my Lord. Now turn with me to John, the 17th chapter. Just roll right on over. to. If you haven't gotten to the first one, just go on and just start going on over to the 17th right now. You may be there now. Come on, somebody say amen. 17th chapter. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to start here, um, here at the 13th verse. And this is Jesus praying uh, to God the Father. And he says, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the earth. He says that uh, while I'm still in the world. And he says, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. He's talking about his disciples. And he says, I have given them your word, and the world hated them. For they, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. He says, my prayer is that you do not take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. It says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. And then verse 17 says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. I'm going to read that again because this here is the key verse. It says, as you sent me, meaning Jesus, into the world, I, Jesus, am sending my people into the world. And then verse 19 says, for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. And the church said, Amen. Amen. We thank God for the word of truth. And, yeah. and you know, um, as I was sitting back and I was reflecting on this and reflecting on Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ being a part of the church and Jesus Christ being the main fixture of the church, I, I can remember uh, some time ago, it, it was several, several years back, uh, when, when, when me and my wife, we were visiting down south, and we were visiting this, uh, this, this young preacher, and, and, I, and I say young, I mean it's relative, uh, we were around the same age, amen? And, and this young preacher had a beautiful church, a beautiful uh, young church, and, it, and, and they had, they had a, a nice assembly of families. And, and I remember being just so impressed with the church because the young people were enthused in the things of God, and they looked like they were so excited about the things of God. And, and, and this precious pastor pastor, you know, when he would preach, he would preach with such light and with such a, a, a zeal. And, and, and I, remember, I remember being so impressed. I remember thinking, if we lived in this area, I would go to this church. I, rem I remember thinking that, and, you know, and, and I, was, I was a local preacher, amen, and, or, or in the AME Zion Church. And and this, this young man, this young man, he uh, after the service was over, we were meeting and greeting everyone, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful occasion. And so he took me back in his pastor's study, and he began to, you know, just kind of give me his testimony and tell me about his life and and how he came into the ministry. And it was such a just a beautiful fellowship. I, I really appreciate him sharing with me at the time because you know, if you're a young preacher, you love to have pastors to just kind of sit and share with you. And I remember him telling me all about the church, and, and, and I remember being just so impressed. But then he said one thing that kind of threw me off, and I said, huh? 
Now, mind you, I'm a young preacher, and I'm just excited about preaching the word of God. I'm excited about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and all I want to do is preach. Come on, somebody say amen. If the preachers, you remember that. All you want to do is preach. All you want to do is teach the word of God. But this pastor said this to me. He said, you know something? Uh, he, he called me pastor, even though I wasn't a pastor. He said, he said, pastor, you know something? He said, people just aren't getting saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore. And I said, wow. He said, you know, people get saved, not, not by the gospel. It just doesn't work anymore. And after all of the conversation that we had, I was so impressed. And this just was like, it came out of nowhere. And it just, it kind of confused me, uh, if I can be honest. And, and I remember thinking, what do, you, what do you mean? And he said, well, people are now looking for signs and wonders. And if you can't give them signs and wonders, they're not going to get saved. And he said, we need people to get healed, and we need people to get delivered. We need people to get set free. And he said, and we also need some man-made signs and wonders. Now you know my, uh, my interest is really peaked because I'm, I'm blown away. And he said, you know, so we got to give him some. And that's why you see the screen, and that's why you see the lighting. That's why you hear the musicians playing and all of the things that we add to it. Those are signs and wonders that come from men. That's the only way people are getting saved. Now, mind you, I didn't argue with him because I, I'm a young preacher and he's a pastor. And, you know, all, all the way up until then, I was so impressed. And I still, I, you know, I still loved him. I still even respected him. Amen. But, but I just didn't agree with him. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Now, 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 now roll the time forward. And now I'm a pastor. And, and I've been pastoring now for a few years. Come on, somebody say amen. Matter of fact, it's been a little bit more than that if you include uh, the, int the year as an interim pastor and a couple of years as an assistant. And now I can feel what he felt. Come on, somebody, let's just be honest about it, amen. Let's just be honest. I can feel what he felt at the time. But I still don't agree with him. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> The word of God says in Romans 1.16, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. And verse 17 says, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that by faith from the first to the last, which is written, the just or the righteous shall live by faith. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm telling you something. Can somebody to say amen amen because you see the gospel of jesus christ only you can only get saved by the power of the gospel by the power of this word i want you to know it ain't by feelings come on somebody say amen because sometimes you'll preach and you'll teach sometimes you'll witness to people and they'll look at you as if you had two heads but the bible says don't take them out of the world the world hates them but i'm going to keep them in the world because the world hated me but I love the world. Come on, somebody say amen. Seems like an oxymoron. Seems like it doesn't work right, amen. How can you take us out of the world, the world, we hate the world, don't love the world, love the world, hate the world. Well, here's what God is saying. He says, don't love the way of the world. Hate the way of the world. But love the people that are in the world. Come on, somebody say amen. That's why Jesus cannot be taken out of the church. The church belongs to Jesus. Say it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Let me tell you something. When it's no longer all about Jesus, we're in trouble. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus because, see, Jesus is constant. I love him because he's constant. Jesus is consistent. How many of you, you know, you're tired of folk that are inconsistent? You're tired of people that are wishy-washy. One day you're my best friend, and then the next day you act like you don't even know me. Come on, somebody say amen. One day you want to hang out with me, and then the next day, all of a sudden, you don't want to hang out now that some other friends have come around. See, we experience these things from people. We experience these things from men. As a matter of fact, can we be honest for a second? Sometimes you act like a friend and then sometimes you don't act like a friend. It all depends on the mood that you're in. I love Jesus because Jesus is consistent. Amen. Jesus loved me today. He loved me yesterday and he's going to love me tomorrow. Come on, somebody say amen. Doesn't matter what I do. Doesn't Look, it doesn't matter any of those. He's still going to love me. Thank God for that. That's why you can't throw Jesus out of the church. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, keep him in the church. 
You got to keep him in the church, amen, because it belongs to him. They looked right at Jesus and did not realize that they were talking to the very one who created them. While they were rejecting him, he had created them. Uh We said that there are at least 10 biblical reasons why Jesus had to come into the world. At least 10. There are many others, amen, but we just narrowed down to 10 biblical reasons why Jesus had to come into the world. And we said number 10. We're going to go from 10, and we're working our way up to number 1, amen? Uh, Sort of those older folks, sort of like uh, 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 who used to do that? Uh, uh, Jay Leno or one of them used to do that, that number 10, and and, and work their way up. Well, we're going to go from 10. We said 10, Jesus came to fulfill the prophecy of God, number 10. He came to fulfill the prophecy of God. I love the way the Bible is laid out because the Bible proves itself in that Jesus was talked about from the very beginning. From Genesis on down, Jesus, you can see the highlight and, the, and you, can, you can see the prophetic uh, 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 harmony of Jesus' name being, being brought through the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, when you do your studies, you find out that Jesus really in the Old Testament was concealed. And then in the New Testament, he was revealed. Come on, amen? Just try to remember that in the Old Testament, Jesus is concealed. And in the New Testament, Jesus is revealed. Everything that God said, Jesus was going to back. I like that about Jesus. See, Jesus was dependable. I like that. Amen. He didn't have to do it. He wanted to do it. Come on. Somebody say amen. I love that about Jesus because Jesus said, if my daddy said it, then I'm going to do it. Would you like to have somebody like that? Whatever you said, you know your child was going to back it up. Come on, somebody say amen. Whatever you said, if you found yourself that you couldn't come through or whatever reason, your son was going to back you up. Your daughter was going to back you up. If my mama said it, then I'm going to do it. Oh, I love Jesus. I love him like that. He's so dependable. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. We said number nine, Jesus came to bring light into a darkened world. He came to bring light into a darkened world. It is key to understand that the world is darkened. It is key to understand because, see, most people think that the world is full of light. Amen? Folk are dying, going to hell. Folk just, and, they, and they're not going to hell like, you know, just sadly going to hell. They're going to hell saying, "Wee!" going straight to hell. Why? Because we're in a land that is dark and is getting darker day by day. Jesus had to come to bring light into a dark world. Why? Because Jesus had to roll back the darkness, amen, and bring the marvelous light. For those who want the light, they'll be drawn by the light. And for those who want the darkness, they'll just keep on following the darkness. He had to come to do this, amen. And we said number 10, we're going we're gonna to spend the next few minutes talking about number 8, amen. Number eight, Jesus came into the world to show us the way. Amen. We're going to finish it off today on this. And we, we got some more uh, next week we're going to talk about. But right now, we're going we're gonna to end it right here with this one here. Next, next, next few minutes or so. We said that Jesus came to show us the way. Here's what I like about this. Because it's one thing to preach to me. It's one thing to give me commands and bark orders and all of that. It's one thing to do that. But it's a whole nother thing when you roll up your sleeves and you get in there with me and you show me how to do it. That's a whole nother level. The best managers are ones who will get in and say, come on, I'm going to get right in there with you and let me show you how it's done. Amen. And you can pick up just like that when somebody gets in and they personally, physically show you the way. There are some people that don't, tell, they don't jump in because they don't know how to do it. Come on, somebody say amen. See, some people, all they know how to do is bark orders. Some people, all they know is theory. They could tell you, you know, re- from reading books how to do this, that, or the other, but they can't get in and show you. You wonder, hey, man, come on and get in here and show me how to do it. No, that's your job and it's my job. Why? They don't want to be exposed by the fact that they do not know how to do it. But Jesus, he wasn't worried about that. Jesus got in and he walked with them and talked with them and show them the way. Come on, somebody say amen. I love Jesus. Don't y'all love Jesus? I love Jesus because he was dependable. He was dependable. We said under Roman number one, Roman number one under eight, and we're looking at A. Jesus came to show us that the Father loves the Son. Amen. What do you mean by he showed us the way? It's one of the things he showed us. He showed us that the Father loves 
the Son. Now, why is this important? Because most people come to church, they want to know who loves me. I don't care about somebody loving somebody else. I want to know who loves me. Amen. So most people come to the church, I, I need love. I want love. Well, let me tell you, this is very important for us to understand. Because if the Father truly loves the Son, like the Son says that the Father loved the Son, guess what? That same love is transferable. Come on, somebody say amen. That same love is coming to us. But what has happened? The world is sitting fear feeling alienated from God, and so they can't experience God's love. They could not, no matter how many prophets he brought, no matter how many preachers he brought, no matter how many kings he brought, no matter how many judges he brought, the people could not feel the love of God. But God said, let me show I'm going to bring one even better. I'm going to bring my son, my one and only son. And the son came, and he said, my father loves me. You can tell when a child enters the room whose parents love them. Come on, somebody say amen. You can tell a child who has not been loved, and you can tell a child who's been loved. Come on, somebody say amen. It is very difficult for a child who has not been loved, it is very difficult for them to love somebody else. But a child that's been loved, that's been cared for, that child can easily love other people. Come on, somebody say amen. He loves him. Now, you need, to, you need to really get underneath this because, see, the fact that God loves his son, you have to imagine this. Those who have children, imagine you have a son. And if you have just a daughter, you say daughter. But look, understand this. This child is a perfect child. Oh, you got the perfect child. Amen. Child never did anything wrong, never did anything bad, never got into any kind of trouble. This is a perfect child. As a matter of fact, when you look in the mirror, this child looks exactly like you. Come on, somebody say amen. It's a little mini me. Look exactly like you look. Amen. Whatever you say, your child says. Whatever you do, your child do. Come on, somebody say amen. If you tell your child, you give your child instructions. When you come home, every last thing is done to the letter and you say I'm so proud of you yeah, they say well I love you and I honor you mama I honor you daddy I'm talking about that kind of child he was a perfect son perfect son can you imagine having a son where people come and call you from school and say let me tell you something about your child your child is so good your child is the perfect child I wish I had more of them in my class come on somebody say amen Yo, you must be a good parent because your child is perfect in every way. Oh, when you have a special kind of love. Now, I know you don't want to admit it because you got multiple children, but let me tell you something. You have a special love, a special fondness for this child. Now, imagine if you're your only child. Your only child. Oh, he loved his son. Love his son. He's, That's my boy. That's my boy. He looked just like me. He talks like me and walks like me. And whatever I tell you, if I can't do it, my son will come in and he'll do it. The father loved the son. And guess what? The son loved the father. Come on, somebody say amen. You know, you can tell when a child is loved because they always talk about their parents. My parents, my parents, my, par my father, my father, my father, my mother, my mother, my mother. Oh, they love their parents. This is very, very important. Very important. That he loves him. John 3.35 says the father loves the son and has placed everything in his hands. He loves the son and has placed everything in his hands. Jesus has all the authority. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. If anybody come to you and say Jesus don't have the authority, then you take them over here and you say turn to John 3.35. Jesus has all of the authority. Amen. So we serving the right one. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. I want you to know Muhammad don't have this kind of authority. Amen. Futures don't have this kind of authority. Amen. No other God have this kind of authority. But Jesus has all authority. Why? Because the Father loves the son the father loves the son and the son loves the father and guess what in letter b under roman number one we can depend on the fact that the father and the son loves us both amen the father and the son loves us both we talked about john three sixteen. it says for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life we go down to john 15 and 9 it says and the father has loved me this is jesus talking he said so i have loved you just like the father loves me i love you just like he loves me see the father did not let the son just perish he raised the son up from the dead. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. 
He raised the son up from the dead and he raised them with all power and all authority and all wisdom and all knowledge and all prestige. And he set them at the right hand of God, the father almighty. He loves you like that. Well, Jesus loves you just like the father loves him. Amen. Amen. When you pass on from here, he said, you're going to rule with me. You're going to be with me. You're going to rule with me. See, you have to know this. Why? Because I love you. This is why this is so important. It's not because of how many good things you do. See, some people think that if I can do a number of good things, maybe God will love me. Maybe God will love me. That's why a lot of people don't even get saved, amen, because they think I got to do this, that, that, and the other. I'm just not ready to give it up. You're trying, to, you're trying to go and witness to people who aren't saved. You're trying to witness to people who aren't committed to God. What they're thinking about is I got to give up this, that, this, that, and the other. Uh, God ain't going to love me. He's not going to love me like he loved y'all, but I want you to know love comes from the heart. It comes from the heart of God. who he is. He is love, and if we receive him by faith, he said it doesn't matter what you do I love you yeah. once you're a son and daughter of God you are already connected come on somebody say amen. amen he'll never disown you come on somebody say amen isn't that comforting to know that there's nothing that you can do where God will disown you now you can breach the fellowship with God you can breach fellowship hey come on somebody say amen yeah. you look you can breach you can breach the favor of God where God won't have favor on you but you'll never once you become a son and daughter of God he loves you as a son and a daughter and he will not let you go yeah. you're heaven bound look at your neighbor and say you're heaven bound why are you looking sad? Why are you looking somber? Why are you looking? Because you're, see, you're heaven bound. You have to know this. You have to know that the thing that fears most people is death. Yeah. Death is the thing that fears the most. The, the man with the most courage, he fears death. Yeah. God said, you don't have to fear death. Why? Because I love you. Come on, somebody say amen. I love you as a son and I love you as a daughter. See, this is what I love about Jesus. Jesus came to connect us to the Father. He yeah. says, I love you and he loves me and I love you. Letter C under Roman number one. It says, Jesus command us to love one another. Okay, now here come the love. The love is flowing now. The father loves the son, the son loves the father, and the son loves us. He said, look, I love you, and so now I want you to love each other. John 15 and 12, write that down. It says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. It's a shame that you can go into church and not get love. Come on, somebody say amen. It's a sin and a shame. And look, we're easy. There is a disconnect. This is what I love about Jesus. Jesus doesn't have disconnects. We have disconnects. See, I can tell you I love you and I can say it with it's easy to say watch this let me say how easy it is I love you 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 I see that's easy it's easy to say but it's not easy to do come on somebody say amen see folk can say I love you and we have perfected it in the church where we'll easily say love you bruh love you sis love you Love you, boo. Love you. We know how to. We know how to give these expressions of love. But to be able to live in true love, it takes the power of God. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, love each other as I have loved you. Jesus loved us to where he proved it. Jesus didn't just say, I love you and then let you go. Amen. Jesus gave his life for you. Look, the word of God says, look, it says no greater love. John 15, 13. It says no greater love than this, that one who will lay down his life for a friend. No greater love. Jesus came and demonstrated this. Why did he have to come into the earth? Because he needed to demonstrate this kind of love. See, because we do the religious kind of love. Religious people say, I love you, and then kick you on out the door. Whenever you need a helping hand, they say, I'll pray for you. I'll be praying for you. See, that's the easiest thing to do. A man is hungry. A man needs help. You don't just say, hey, pray for you. Can't do that. You got to help find him. Find some help. Amen. He says, this is true love. Love is action. Love is not feelings. Jesus commanded that we love one another. In the church, the church will be a powerful place if people would truly love each other. Amen. He goes a step further. He says, I command you this. 
I command that you all love your neighbors. But guess what? Jesus came and he demonstrated that love. Come on, somebody say amen. Matthew 22, 39. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. Mark 12, 31 says, love your neighbor as yourself. He says, there is no greater commandment than these. Love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 5 and 14, it says that the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor neighbor as yourself the one place where people should be able to experience love is the church come on somebody say amen see now we it can you can easily love brother and sister in christ but can you love your neighbor he said who is my neighbor your neighbor is everyone you come in contact with that becomes your neighbor he said you love on them how do you draw people to the throne of Christ. How do you draw people to the heart of Christ? Well, you extend Christ out to people. Amen. Come on. You extend them out to your neighbors and you love your neighbors. When we go on outreach in this neighborhood, they're going to experience the love of Christ. Come on. Somebody say amen. You don't come preaching to people. You don't come beating people over the head. You don't come judging people. You come extending the love of Jesus Christ. He said, love thy neighbor. He said, look, if you would do this, if you would love thy neighbor from the spirit of God, he said, all of the commandments hinge on this fact. If you can do this, you can, you can, you can, look, if you can love your neighbor, this, this thing is so hard. This thing is so hard. He said, if you can grasp this, if you reach for loving your neighbor, it makes every other law easy to obtain. Because you're shooting way ahead of that. Love your neighbor. Say, love thy neighbor, love thy neighbor. as myself. myself. Got to do that. Amen? Amen? But Jesus showed us that by example. Jesus hung out with people he shouldn't have hung out with. He stopped with the lady at the well, the woman at the well. They said, why are you with that woman? Why are you talking to that woman? But Jesus sat there and he dialogued with her. Even she said, you know, y'all don't talk to us. Y'all don't look at y'all don't even Y'all don't even associate with us. What are you doing? But see, Jesus, he knew, love your neighbor. He sat down and talked with her like she was somebody because he realized that she was somebody. He had created her and made her before the foundation of the earth. He was talking about somebody that was his own property. He said, love my neighbor. He began to talk with her. Matter of fact, got that woman saved. She went out, she evangelized. Look, she went out and evangelized everybody. She said, come see a man that told me everything about myself. Hey man, she wanted to talk. Look, she was wanted to talk business with him. Then she wanted to talk religion with him. But he said, no, I'm getting to the fact of the crust of the fact and the crust of the matter. I'm getting to where it is. He said, you ain't, the, go get your husband. Bring your husband. She said, well, you know what? I ain't got no husband. He said, yeah, you're right. You ain't got no husband because the one that you would ain't your husband. Oh, she looked at him and said, oh my Lord, you must be a prophet. My, my Lord, you done already called me out. You must be a prophet. Jesus began to dialogue with her and revealed to him who he is. Come on, somebody say amen. But see, he couldn't have done that if he didn't love his neighbor. Folk want to get folk, you want to get folk in the church, but you don't want to love them. Come on, somebody say amen. We're not trying to get cattle. Amen. These are God's beloved. Come on, somebody say amen. Love thy neighbor. Jesus came in and showed us how to love our neighbor. Hung out with folk who you would despise. The tax collector who people despise, Jesus came and said, come on, come hang out with me. Go over your house. Get the whole family saved. Come on, somebody say amen. He loved them. The woman who was about to get stoned, caught in adultery. And Jesus defended her. Come on, somebody say amen. She ended up following Jesus. Why? Because he, he believed in loving thy neighbor. Yeah, as you thought this was hard, Jesus goes a step further. He, is a, he has a command. Matthew 5, 43. He says this, he says, you have heard that I, you've heard that it has been said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Verse 44, he says, but I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. And he said, and if you do this, he said, that will show that you are the sons and daughters of God. Come on, somebody say amen. He said, I'm taking it a step further. When you thought this is too hard, I can't love everybody because everybody's not lovable. He said, hold on now. Hey, before you get all hung up on this one, I got even one a step further. He said, love your enemies God didn't just tell us to love our enemies he sent Jesus and Jesus showed us the way to love our enemies when they came and they, they came to get Jesus the, the, the whole clan gang came and they had they had chains and they had they had they had uh, stakes and they had sticks all kind of weapons coming to get Jesus and one of Jesus main boys uh, pulled out a weapon and came and Jesus said no 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 
Oh, no, we're not going to do that. Those who live by the sword or die by the sword. As a matter of fact, when he went to cut the man's head off, he cut the man's ear off. And Jesus went and healed the ear. He went and healed the ear of the individual who was coming to drag him to get crucified. Love your enemies. Jesus showed us the way. He wasn't just talking this talk. He was walking this walk. As a matter of fact, when it all came said and done and done and said, and Jesus was on the cross, Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Come on, y'all. Let's be honest about it. If we were on that cross, we say, Lord, get them, get them, get them all. When the thunder started lightning and the, and the clouds started rolling, we'd be up there saying, get them all, get them all. And we'd be just showing it. Get that one, get that one, get that one, get that one. Come on, let's just be honest about it. Y'all laughing, but just be honest about it. But Jesus, he showed us the way. It's one thing to tell you. It's another thing to show you. I like Stephen. Stephen, you know, he, 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 took, he, took, he took Jesus at his word. He, he watched the example. And when they were stoning Stephen, Stephen looked up and he said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. As the rocks were hitting them in the face, he was saying they don't know what they're doing. Oh, it's a nice, cute little story. But if you saw the reality of it and you saw those rocks hitting them, knots and blood gushing everywhere and folks gnarling and cursing and all of that. And he said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. See, that's the love that's transferable. Come on, somebody say amen. This kind of love is, this is a powerful kind of love. This is a revolutionary kind of love, amen. If you want to make a change in the world, amen, you love like Jesus and follow Jesus' example. I love Jesus, and I always love Jesus because Jesus didn't just talk this thing. Jesus walked this thing. In conclusion, turn with me to Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians, the first chapter, and the 21st verse, it reminds us that once you were alienated from God, yeah. you were enemies in your mind because of your evil behavior. You were enemies in your own mind. Now, the Lord said, the Lord said, I love you, but in your own mind, you felt like I'm an enemy of God because I'm just sinning left and right. Ain't no way he can love me. As sinful as I am, he cannot love me. As a matter of fact, did you hear what I said about God? Did you hear what I said about his people? He can't love me. You see the bad stuff? I, I, talk, I talk so bad about his peoples. Ain't no way he can love me. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Some, got somebody talking about your brother, talking about your sister, talking about your mother, talking about your father, and you just roll up on them and you catch them. Oh, ain't no love there. Them fighting words. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Those are fighting words. But God, he loved us in spite of all of that stuff. He said, you were alienated from me, and you were enemies in your own mind because of your evil behavior. He says in verse 22, he says, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through the death and presence of the holy, of the holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Look at God. Look at God. He said, look, I came down, and even though you were talking bad about me, even though you said you weren't going to come to me, even though you were talking about my children, I still saved you. I saved you. You ain't had nothing to do with it. I saved you and brought you in, revealed myself to you, and I counted you as my own. He said, now you do the same thing. You do likewise to others. Don't judge on people. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Love on people. You never know who you're looking at. Doesn't, it doesn't matter what they're doing. You, may, you don't know who you may be looking at. You may be looking at the next person that's ready to give their lives to the Lord. He says, so love. Put love out there first. Before you get ready to judge, say, no, no, what would Jesus do on this one? He would love on them. He would love on them. We call out sin. But we love the sinner. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And if we do this, said this gospel that you have heard and has seen and proclaimed to every creature under heaven, it says, and of which I, Paul, I'm a servant to this day. I love the gospel. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. How many of y'all love the gospel? I love the gospel. I love the word of God. Without the word of God, we're lost. But with the word of God, we are the light of the world in Jesus name to the glory of the father let the church say amen, amen. come on give God some praise for the power of his word
Hallelujah.